Hi guys, welcome back to Chatter's DIY and the fourth instalment of my DIY loft conversion. Today we're going to be concentrating on installing the staircase and finishing off the plasterboarding. And I've got a series of photos to take you through to explain how that was done and where we've got to at the moment. Uh, I hope you enjoy this one. There's quite a lot of drastic changes. It really starts to come together in this video and um, I think you'll like it. Stick around and I'll see you at the end. So the plasterboarding is nearly um, finished in the ensuite on this shot. Uh, you can see that obviously there's just the bit where the uh, the little uh, cupboard is for the uh, the pipe, um, the pipe work and everything uh, where it sticks out. That's obviously got to be covered, and I've still got to do around the window. Um, doing around the window um, is a little bit more difficult. There's quite a lot of faffing around to do to get the right angles. Um, I've decided to go on both the windows in there with uh, flared openings so instead of right angular sort of uh, plasterboard edges <clears throat> they actually open out slightly diagonal in all directions and that enables more light to come through. I do believe it's around 20% more light even though it's only that slight adjustment it just allows for that uh, much more light to come through the window opening and then obviously uh, fill the room up. So um, we went for that to maximize the amount of light. On here you can see that I've still got to do the ceiling. Um, obviously this is just before we had the uh, the last inspection, uh, our last inspection which was the second, um, but the, the majority of the, uh, the rest of it's done. Here's a close up of the flared openings on the main window and you can see a little bit of the view that we've got over the park um, a lot of the reason why we opted for it as well because because of how good the view is going to be the <clears throat> the plasterboard itself runs into a little uh, recess that runs around the edge of the frame and that's why it's such a clean um, join between the two and then uh, everything else that you can see that doesn't look quite as neat is obviously going to get covered up by the uh, the plaster when it skims over to enable the finishing off of the plaster plaster boarding i needed to get the stairs in first and um, you can see through the opening that has just been cut in the top of my landing ceiling uh, there's a bit of brickwork and then it goes to the point where the uh, the um, cavity wall insulation uh, stops and then the stud work starts and I've managed to use 3 by 2 stud work on that section and that allowed it to be a pretty flush um, join between the plastered walls of the first floor and then the exposed brick and the stud work above. Once the plasterboard comes down the idea is that it's going to be the same thickness and then the, the skim when it's done will just go straight over the top and it'll just be a, a faultless join between the two levels, between the two floors I should say. You can see where the um, the ceiling above the staircase as well. You can see a little bit, little bit better on this shot. Um, it comes straight down. It hits that purlin, um, which I've had to sand back to get to a nice finish. I couldn't actually do the back edge, uh, the bottom edge of what as we look at it now. Um, so I've made it so that the uh, the ceiling runs down from the sort of the corner, the back corner of the purlin. And then you only see the two sides of it uh, at an equal amount. And I thought, even though it's only a little bit exposed, um, originally it was going to be a lot more exposed, but obviously the roof ended up being thicker insulation because of the strengthening of the rafters. But um, I really like the idea of the, that being on show. Uh, and obviously I copied that then over the top of the, um, the bed headboard. So starting with the staircase, um, I then had to remove the uh, the wall, part of the wall, into the uh, old box room. Building that winder was quite precarious. If you can imagine uh, from the top of where that wall was, when I was trying to attach this winder and, and build it up, the drop went from the uh, inside the loft all the way down to the bottom of the stairs on the on the ground floor. So I was leaning over that, trying to screw bits of uh, the stair stringer to the uh, wall uh, and trying to make sure it was level, uh, trying to hold one piece, trying to hold the level, 
trying to make a mark so that it, you know it was in the right place or hold the drill to mark the wall where it's got to be uh, secured that was difficult i'll tell you and um and then we had to throw into that then once the two stringers were attached you started to have to build up the the treads of the steps but they had to have then the um the newel post the top newel post in position which you can see obviously uh, and they had to fit into the recesses cut into the newel post and into the recesses cut into the stringer which meant that you had to open the gap up between the two to fit them in but when you'd done the top one then did the bottom the one further down the one at the top wanted to drop out because you was opening the gap up and at one point i was getting kirsty to hold it up with a, a wooden prop uh and and the lot fell down and nearly landed on her head but <laughs> She uh, she was a right trooper. She didn't complain. We got on with it. We had a little bit of a row because we was uh, so stressed doing that section, but we soon got over it. And once the three steps were in place as they are there, that was when I then removed the section of the wall um, to allow the straight set of stringer, uh, the main straight set, to uh, to just be lifted up the stairs, and it literally just slotted into position. Um, there was a, an opening or two that I'll show you now. Just show you a quick one there from uh, further back. You can see the, the wall again where there's the, um, the plaster ends and the brickwork starts and then the stud work. That's all got to be married up once the stringer goes in. Um, just to the left of the winder, the left hand side of where the winder is, there you can see it just the step the tread just sticks out a little bit more than the stringer which allowed the uh like the uh, the main straight set to be positioned correctly on the left hand side but on the right hand side at the bottom of where you can see the newel post there you can see there's um there's a recess cut out there and uh there was a, a marry a piece that married up to that on the end of the stringer and so the two sides just slotted in together. The riser get, got added uh, later um, from behind. And um, yeah, that uh, that was one of the easiest things to do of all. That Making that top three steps took most of a day uh, and with a lot of uh, stress and messing around. But then installing the stringer went in quite quickly, which was good because I was trying to get it finished in the, in the, in the one day. And the uh, the rush to get it finished was then why it jumps a little bit to this section. Actually, it's not that much of a jump. It's just it just looks it because it's pretty much finished. Um, I just had to prop up as we. Uh, I'll just give a shout out now to Liam Hackney and uh, Dan Bill, uh, my neighbour and my friend. They came round and helped pick the stringer up, get it up the stairs and over the banister and into position. And whilst I'd got them there. It fitted in so perfectly that the three of us just went, well, well we've got hold of it, we might as well. And literally as we uh, held it up in position, it went on like a dream. I just had to prop it up at the bottom up against the wall and you can just see a little bit of wood there. And then I used the, newel, the bottom newel post, stood that up and uh, put the two sections together and that held the stringer in place no no screws no nothing it just it just sat there lovely um obviously it's been secured since but whilst it was just able to to be maneuvered that allowed me to then build the top the, the bottom step uh, and the bottom bit of the stringer and everything and get all that nice and level but as you can see outside it was dark quite late so um, i was doing my best to try and get that done in one day and i didn't get any filming done so that's this is now how the uh, the bedroom starts. The, I'm in the doorway from the uh, landing on the first floor. Um, we were gonna have this is where we were gonna have the door removed and all that wall removed, and we were just gonna extend the landing and go up the stairs. But then that was where that was gonna mean that we were gonna need the door at the top of the stairs with the, with a landing, which uh, as I explained in the design video episode one, um, that that would have impacted on the amount of space up there quite drastically. So we decided to keep this door here. The bedroom effectively starts here now. We'll walk in and that's the um, the bottom step. We made a, I think it's called a, a bullnose 
bottom step so that you can walk and step around the null post and it just means that um, you get that extra little bit of height on the uh, on the bottom section so that the the cupboard and the space underneath the stairs is slightly larger so then as we go up the stairs um, I had to think about how to um, how it was going to be boarded around that null post obviously there's a lot of sections that stick out more than others and you've got to cover the joists up and you can see where the old ceiling joist is there and then the, the new flooring joist on top and then the new flooring uh, floorboards so I've had to just build up that little section there so that um, it came out as far as what the wall does for the bedroom uh, the old bedroom below um, and that all covers up quite nicely in a second you'll see that um, in the background you can just make out that the uh, the plasterboarding around the windows completed uh, but I still ain't done that uh, the ceiling that was one of the, the last things to be done so the winder was a little bit of a headache actually um, I researched how to plasterboard these and close these up but the uh, the solutions were quite difficult um, they certainly looked really difficult it was creating a mesh and doing like a winding sort of plaster plastered wall which uh, I thought looked like really difficult um, that would have been possible if it wasn't for the fact that the turn meant that the um, the one part of the stringer came across and I, I didn't really think that that would look right anyway it would have been alright if the stringer sort of was above the height of the ceiling and you could have made it disappear that way but you know I, I just thought what's the point in having a curve if it's then going to come to a right angled sort of part where the stringer was so in the end uh, I decided to build it out and just block a uh, box it in like this and um, hopefully you'll see in the next video when I do a bit of a tour you'll see how little it actually impacts on the uh, on the on the space on the landing which we were absolutely chuffed about um, one of the concerns was that you know if, as you was walking around the landing there was just going to be this big thing in your face like sort of sticking out the ceiling but actually it's so high up uh, it doesn't even come into your sort of field of vision unless you, you turn to look at it um, you, you know it just blends into the background so once the stairs were all in and secure I was able to finish off the plasterboarding uh, I didn't have to go and fetch any extra than what I bought to you know I got the amount that I uh, expected to use uh, and it went in nicely I've had to glue some of it at the bottom um, because the natural sort of line of the stud work just made it stick out a few millimeters from the uh, the line of the plasterboard uh, the plasters um, render below and so I just had to put a couple of screws in and just pull it in a, a little bit with some um, with some strong adhesive and it's it's worked out perfectly um, you can't I haven't done a close-up of that but it's pretty much dead on in line certainly within the um, the tolerance required for the uh, the skim to cover it up in one go on the other side of the stairs um, where the hole was cut out of the wall I've used some uh, nine mil plasterboard which because the plaster the render on the uh, plaster uh, of the wall was a little bit thinner but I had some nine mil left over from doing um, the wardrobes and, and things like that that you'll see in a minute and uh, that's again that's worked out quite nicely with the levels looking from the loft down at the same section uh, you can just about make out the little bit of trim coming from the post to the uh, the wall where the draw recess is um, that's where there's going to be a little more a uh, little bit of wood trim again to go up to where the balustrade goes but um, yeah that's the wall going down and you can see how, how that's all looking a lot more finished once the plasterboard started going on uh, every section it just really made a massive difference to to how it looked like a room rather than a building site um, just seeing that you know that boarding going up everybody sort of came upstairs and went wow every time a lot another section looking was around completed. that corner uh, and it's seen the null post really you can see now where the that nine mil plasterboard I've managed to get it cut so it's in line with the stringer and up the post and then at the top I've just done a little bit of trim work 
just to cover up the edge of the floorboards and there's going to be a little bit of wood placed the other side of that to sort of trim around the mill post and up to where the balustrade uh, the bottom section of the balustrade is going to be uh, all that section then will be glossed the same as the, the post and um, should marry up the side wall of the stairs and the um, the wall of the um, the drawers are going to be the other side of there and now into the ensuite um, previously on the, uh, one of the first photo I think you could see that the um, the plasterboard that had been used in this shower section uh, was like the light green stuff which was moisture resistant plasterboard on the right hand wall you can see the pipe coming out for the shower uh, inlet and then you've got the electric cable we're only having an electric shower so that we've got um, like a backup if the boiler ever goes then um, the obviously we won't be able to use a shower on the first floor because um, it's a mixer shower but we'd still have the use of the electric shower in the loft and vice versa so um, we've gone for an electric shower and the on the left hand wall you can see that there's like a, a square ish section that uh, recesses in that's going to be like a little shelf on the inside um, of the shower somewhere to place toiletries and that um, yeah I've seen that on a few other photos and nicked that idea as for the rest, rest of the ensuite the boarding around that window is now done as well uh, all the boarding around that uh, dwarf wall and the section where the pipes are that's all done the uh, at this shot I think the sink and the toilet are both plumbed in as well with the macerator um, I've got a bit of an issue with the macerator leaking at the minute so that's not ideal but hopefully obviously when it gets all took apart and, and tiled we'll be able to rectify that pretty easily um, a slightly closer up shot yeah, just uh, just to show you the sort of the shelf that runs across the back almost like a windowsill uh, I think I described that in the last video um, to put like the hand wash and things like that on maybe uh, toothbrushes and that uh, to be useful and then the larger section on the left I'm planning on just putting the um, bath towels folded up sort of stacked up neatly um, on top of all that section that will be tiled um, up until the point where the roof actually slopes on the angle and that that sloping roof will be painted everything else below that all the walls will be uh, tiled so this is um, an angle of the loft that I don't think I've used uh, for quite a while uh, apart from on the before shots um, the plasterboard in for this section going around each and every uh, layer of bricks was hard uh, unfortunately if you get a closer up look you'll see that there's like between a 10 and maybe even 20 mil gap in some places as it cuts as I've cut it around the brickwork but getting it to actually shape around those bricks was really difficult so I've done the best I can um, I've talked about it with my plasterer and he's happy to sort of plaster around each one but because of the gap um, he said that he can't guarantee and fully expects in fact for that for it to crack in the join between the, uh, the brickwork and the plaster so it's not a problem we're just waiting for that to happen and then we're going to caulk all of it um, in the in the corner of the join and then we'll uh, do that prior to painting and it shouldn't be an issue then after that but um, I'm really happy and, and like the idea of having that brickwork exposed um, and that area that triangular section is going to be used as a, a dressing table with, and the, the top of the apex of that triangle is going to be a, a mirror so I had to wait until the plasterboarding was pretty much finished I needed to do the inside of that wardrobe section which was where I was uh, reserving for the um, for the inspection so that they could check it uh, once that was boarded I was able to start building the wardrobe wall um, the top section of wood that was cut on an angle to match the roof slope uh, it came across lovely and uh, level but it did sort of wave 
um, backwards a little bit. There was a bit of a kink because of the way the rafter sat. Uh, but when I doubled that up with another piece underneath, I was able to obviously do that one uh, dead straight. So I was happy with how accurate that wall is. Um, the makeup of it is that I'm framing out there the opening of the first wardrobe. And then the that opening is then uh, edged with tile trim, 10 mil tile trim. And then I'm using 9 mil plasterboard for that face, for that wall. Uh, and that'll leave a, a little uh, one mil gap for the skim that goes over the top just to uh, be really neat up against the tile trim. After that then it was just a case of continuing and uh, copying the exact dimensions of the first opening onto the second. Uh, you can see the framework of the outside of the wall going up and over the uh, the chimney. So I've just got to be careful when I'm doing the board in there, there's going to be a bit of an awkward section for the plasterer to get in between where the layer of the bricks are and where the plasterboard sits. So I might have to fill that up with a with a new piece of brick just to fill the, the, the gap. Uh, that's something I've got to mess around with nearer the time. In between the wardrobe openings, there's a there's like a noggin where a piece then uh, goes through the the wardrobe attaches to the the roof slope and that's going to be for the hanging rail to attach to um i didn't want to do one long one without any support at any point because that would have been far too long it's on it's about 3.4 3.4 meters so uh, it needed to have a couple of supports Unfortunately, screwing uh, and attaching into that roof slope wasn't quite as secure as I liked. Um, so, as a little in-joke, that supporting piece there was there for a hanging rail. So I made a piece of wood that supported that to make it look like a gallow. Um, you ain't going to see that and, you know, no one's going to know, but but me and uh, yeah it'll just make me smile every now and again and then finally this is what it looks like there's your three openings really neat edges around the openings um, it'll look exactly the same as that in, in terms of uh, the precise edge when this uh, when the skimming's done and then the doors will then attach to the edge of that stud work and it'll be on like the kitchen cupboard style opening hinges uh, so that the you can actually get them so that the doors open like almost uh, 180 degrees from where they are in the closed position so that they won't be into the room taking up any space to walk around the bed to the right of where the wardrobes are you can just make out the um, how similar the drawers are going to look they're going to be the drawer fronts are going to be uh, made out the same material as the wardrobe doors and they're both pretty much going to match the cladding on the back of the bed so I'm hoping it's all going to tie in nicely um, there's also going to be a panel on the ceiling but I'm going to uh, leave that and explain that on a later video so that's pretty much it for the plasterboarding the wardrobe was the very last section you can see on this picture how much um, it now, as I said earlier, re resembles a room rather than a building site. Um, more so, uh, I can't wait for the plastering to get done. But this is my favourite view of the room. Uh, when I was designing the room and looking at doing the, the drawings and everything like that, this is exactly how I pictured um, the ensuite and the sizes and everything coming together. You know the, the right amount of opening at the top of the stairs and the view of the room when you come up the stairs and look over towards the window um, the wall of the where the door is for the ensuite that being on an angle was done so that that view would be created um, if that angle wasn't put on that wall then you know the, the walls would be jutting across where the stairs were meant to be and it would make it feel a lot smaller um, even though as I said originally the room was massive because everything's kind of built in and we've had to accommodate the uh, quite a large ensuite in the end um, you know it does impact on the size of the room but 
you know, there's there's nothing left to put in there really, um, other than a couple of bedside tables that I'm gonna attach to the wall anyway. Um, everything you know, everything that you can see is just gonna be all space. You know, it's not gonna be impacted on any more than that. So I'm absolutely loving this. Uh, seeing it all come to fruition is um, it, it really makes me feel good about it. So thanks for watching, everybody. That's today's episode finished. Uh, I hope you like what um, I'm doing with the place and uh, if you do please subscribe to my channel hit the like button and the next episode is going to be a bit of a video tour summarising where we've got to um, and uh, I hope to see you there for that one. Thanks for watching Chatters DIY. See you soon.